sustainability is a big word and a bigger concept. So I'm going to try to break it down for you. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce Moraine Valley Community College's definition of sustainability. This definition was adopted by our board of trustees and our executive leadership team. So those that lead the college have adopted this statement and therefore the college tries to, um, tries to live this statement, tries to behave this statement. Moraine Valley Community College will carry out actions in all operations, academics, and in our community that meet current needs while taking care to protect and enhance the social, environmental, and economic resources needed by future generations to enjoy a quality of life equal to or greater than the present. So again, that's a big definition and a very big concept. So I'm gonna break it down for you. First, you heard three terms. We talked about needs as social, environmental, and economic. These are three basic needs that any community is going to look at when they want to be a thriving community. So community could be your family, could be where you live, could be the school you belong to, or whatever. Um, but when we talk about these needs, we all have these basic needs. We want people in the future to enjoy a quality of life similar to ours or better than. That's another concept of sustainability. So let me break down this economic, environmental, and social sustainability. This is the word. It's two words. Sustain ability. So basically, it means the ability to sustain. The ability to sustain our quality of life into future generations. In order to do that, we need a balance between those three terms I just talked about. So let's talk about first the environmental term. environmental needs. When we talk about being an environmentalist or thinking about the environment, we, we sometimes think of people who um, want to save the earth, save the planet. But when we're talking about it from sustainability's point of view, we're talking about what are the environmental resources that we, we people need in order to sustain, in order to be able to sustain our quality of life. So yes, we do need to take care of environmental resources, but not for the sake of saving the planet, more for the sake of saving us. So environmental needs, environmental resources come in the form of clean air, water, land for food, Those are things that we absolutely need to survive. But we also like other things, like access to outdoors, outdoor recreation, perhaps. And then there are other environmental resources, like those of other natural resources, including fossil fuels at this point, but also renewable resources, like solar energy, or wind power. So these are things when we think about how are we going to sustain our quality of life now and into future generations, we need to be thinking about these environmental needs and how do we make sure that they're there all the time for us, okay? The next term is economic. When we talk about being able to sustain our quality of life or enhance it, make it better for future generations, 
We also need to be considering our economic needs. We need things in economics like um, fair living wages. We need workers' rights. We need the ability to make a profit or earn a living. And we need to be able to source things for our businesses. So economically, how much is it costing me to get one of these natural resources to make my product? Or economically, how much do I have to charge the consumer in order to make a profit without necessarily stealing from them. So these are things when we talk about economic. The third is social, or the people needs. So when we talk about what kind of needs do we have to, for us to be able to sustain this quality of life today or make it better for future generations, we want to look at our social needs. We come to this, we talk about things like access to community. Community might be your church or club or something like that. Access to education. We need to be an educated society if we're going to tackle the problems that we might be faced when we look at these resources and how to maintain them can't do that if we're not educated. We want to talk about um, our ability to um, be democratic, to problem solve as a, as a community. So these are our social needs. Now this is just a few, of course. Maybe you, during your class time, can talk about what other things might fall within each of these categories. So again, going back to that really big definition, breaking it down, it says that we want to meet our current needs, current needs here in our social, environmental, and economic resources so that we can enjoy, so that future generations can enjoy a quality of life similar to today or better, okay? When we talk about what Moraine Valley is doing, it says that it's going to carry out all actions in our college operations and in our community so that we can take care to protect and enhance these three categories. When we talk about sustainability, we cannot talk about each of these individually. If you look here, sustainability is supported by each of these things. We call this the three-legged stool. If you have a three-legged stool and take one leg away, can you sit on it? No, it'd be pretty tricky. So we need to be thinking about sustainability from this three-legged stool concept, always thinking about them simultaneously. Another way this is depicted is a Venn diagram. Where you have three circles of equal shape with each thing. I'm abbreviating environmental, economic, and social, and where they intersect is sustainability. So always thinking about these three things at the same time. So when I have a problem or I have an idea even, say I want to start a new company or develop a new product, I don't want this product to do damage to the ability of my friends today or future generations to be able to meet their needs. I don't want to harm them, right? I want to have a sustainable future. So in a sustainable future, in a sustainable product or behavior, I need to think about all three of these things at once. So how does my product or my service benefit or not take away from economic resources? environmental resources, and social resources. How can I enhance all of these things at the same time from my product or my service? It 
It's a balancing act. It's not easy, but some people are doing it very well. Some organizations, um, some companies, and then some are not doing it so well. Some are not giving care to protecting and enhancing these areas of needs. I'm going to give you an example of an unsustainability uh, behavior and product. Something we don't want. Un, right? Don't want that. However, it does exist today. And so by becoming educated about it, we can be democratic and we can ask for solutions that will stop this kind of behavior. The example I'm going to provide is bottled water. Bottled water is a resource that we've been told that we need. Um, you happen to be very fortunate living in the Chicagoland region where we have some of the best tap water in the nation. However, bottled water is different. Bottled water uses a plastic bottle. Plastic is made from petroleum. Petroleum is a fossil fuel. Fossil fuels have to be mined out of the ground or out of the ocean or other sources, causing huge environmental issues when we disrupt the land. And then when we use those fossil fuels, they emit carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that lead to climate change. It's extremely energy inefficient, so it uses a lot of energy, and it wastes a lot of really, um, really um, uh, good resources. So we have a plastic bottle. This plastic bottle is then filled with water that is not regulated the same way our tap water is. So in the United States, we have organizations, government entities, that regulate things for safety. Tap water is regulated at a higher level than bottled water. So bottled water can have more contaminants in it than tap water. And you don't know because they're not told they have to tell you. The other problem with uh, bottled water is that then it's put in this plastic bottle and it's shipped all around from its source. So if this bottled water was filled in Chicago, it could potentially be filled here, shipped to California, shipped to New Mexico, and shipped to Boston before somebody's drinking it. That's a lot of energy to ship a bottle of water around that's going to last you five minutes when you have water all around that you can get out of the water fountain or bring in your own bottle. The last issue about bottled water is that it comes at a high cost. It comes at a high cost to you financially. The cost of bottled water is exponentially higher than the cost of tap water. If you were to write down how much do you spend on bottled water a year, and then look at the average water bill, which is a great activity to do, you will note that it's anywhere from five to a hundred times more on bottled water than it is on tap water. So let me recap that for you. Bottled water is an unsustainable product. It's an unsustainable behavior. We have to mine resources. We have to go into the earth, dig up holes, and then burn fossil fuels to get it all around. So environmentally, it's doing damage. It is not enhancing, it is not improving, it is not making better the environment. It is hurting it. And therefore, it is hurting our ability to maintain or sustain the resources we need to keep us healthy and alive. Economically, it is not sustainable. Economically, it does not make sense for you to spend five to a hundred times more on something that you should be given, that you should be able to access primarily for free 
water should be a right for everybody, clean drinking water, but instead they're charging you five to a hundred times more than it costs to get out of the tap. So economically, it is not helping you or me. It's helping someone, the company, but not you or me. So it's unsustainable. And then lastly, socially, it's an unsustainable product because we are being kept in the dark about what's in the bottled water. Again, we can have more contaminants in the bottled water posing serious health risks to us, socially, to our community, than our tap water. So that is an unsustainable product. Nothing in balance. An example of a sustainable product, or at least a more sustainable behavior, is um, the example, well, there are several businesses, several industries out there that are trying to figure out solutions to things like this. We think we need this, we don't really need this. We can bring our own refillable bottle. We can fill it up all across Moraine Valley. We have this great thing where you just walk up to the water fountain and you can fill up your own reusable water bottle all the time at the cafe and at the coffee shops on campus you can bring a reusable mug and they'll give you a discount on your coffee or soda or whatever it is you want to drink but in industry there's another example of a sustainable behavior or sustainable product and that comes to us from carpet that's the stuff we use on our floors carpet moraine valley has examples of this carpet there's an organization called Interface Floor. At first, they were making carpet in the traditional way, using petroleum-based products, plastic, oil, in giant sheets of carpet. So you just roll out a big piece of carpet and fill the room. Now, because they recognized how environmentally damaging that was, how not so economically smart it was, because economically, if you were to spill something on the rug, you would have to tear up the whole rug. So for your customer, it's not very economically savvy. And then the products they were using were also making people sick. So socially not a good thing. So what they did to change was they started using products that are not unhealthy. They're safer. They're safer for the people making the carpet and they're safer for the people using the carpet and then those products are also less environmentally damaging so they're better for the environment and then finally the application of the carpet now comes in squares so if you look in your classroom you should notice that the floor has square tiles of carpet those square tiles So now, if I accidentally spill my coffee on the carpet and it stains, two of the tiles, I only have to replace two tiles. And I can send those tiles back to Interface Floor and they'll give me a discount and they'll recycle them, meaning reuse them. They'll chop them up and make new carpet. So that is a more sustainable product, right? Because environmentally, we're using less resources, we have safer products. Economically, it's saving your customer money, it's also saving interface floor money in production. Socially, the materials are not making us sick. Another example of a sustainable behavior or sustainable practice is something we do here on campus. On campus, you'll notice during the spring and summer and fall, it's very beautiful with flowers and plants and nice greenery. In the past, we used to use water that came from the municipality. That water was clean to a level that we could drink it. We would use that water for all of our landscaping needs. Plants and vegetation don't need water that clean. They usually get their water from the ground or when it rains. 
So, um, using the water from the municipality was costing us a lot of money, and it was using a lot of energy, because it takes a lot of energy to clean water to get it safe enough for us to drink. So environmentally, we were using a resource, we were using a lot of energy, wasting it on water that didn't need to be used for our landscaping needs. Economically, it was costing us a lot of money. And socially, we were taking drinking water and putting it on plants when we should be saving that drinking water for the people to drink. So we dug a well. A well is a big hole in the ground where we can pump water from the ground out. So that water goes directly back on the plants of this ground. So we're taking it out and putting it back, taking it out and putting it back. Meanwhile, the plants are getting the, way, uh, the water that they need. So a more sustainable product, more sustainable process. When I say more sustainable, I say more because nothing is I haven't found anything that's 100% the best ever. Sustainability is a continuous process, continuous improvement process. So we're always trying to do better and better and better so that we can have the best future possible. Not just in the future, but today as well. So that is sustainability. The ability to sustain the resources that we have that we need in order to maintain our quality of life today or enhance it to make it better for future generations.